he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified.
Hello and welcome to King's Church Online. We're so pleased to have you with us today. And if you are visiting with us for the first time, we would love for you to, to maybe mention something in the comments and we would particularly like to give you a especially warm welcome. So my name is Judith and I am one of the leaders here at King's Church. So today we will be having um, a time of worship and I particularly want to encourage you to engage with worship the best you can. I know it's not quite the same as being in a room full of people, but just know that the presence of God is with you and we are all together and one in spirit. So let's come together and let's enjoy our time of worship together. Um, after that, we will have the notices and a time of prayer together and then we're going to have the preached word coming from Tunji which will be great. Um, before I hand over to James who will lead us in our time of worship I want to say thank you to Chono she has been heading up our student work ministry and young adults and she has done a really good job and she's been doing that for the past couple of years and she is now moving on to London to continue with her pharmacy um, pre-registration and so we want to cheer you on Chano and we're going to cheer you on and we hope all the best for you and we really pray for God's hand of blessing and success on you while you go. So before we start our time of worship together I just want to read this passage from Psalm 89. It's from verse five and it says this, the heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too, in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can, can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. So I'm just going to just pray and then hand over to James. Lord God, I just want to thank you that you are an awesome, almighty God. That, Lord God, there is nothing and nobody that compares with you. And right now, Lord God, we just position ourselves, position our hearts to you, Lord God. And we say, Lord, we worship you. 
We adore you and we give you our praise. Amen. Thank you, Judith. Um, it's so great for us to be able to get together and worship together. Um, kids, if you want to, feel free to get up and dance around and jump around. Um, let's just worship together.
my sin Lost without hope, no place to begin Love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began No ash was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to Your endless love pouring down on us. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. Release from my chains. I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was around. Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. That's when Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. Oh, when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began, no, oh, we're free, free forever, we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free.
will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great I am Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great I am Lord And your God.
spoke what you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Holy, overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves to 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Holy, overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God your fault, still your love for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so Lie you won't 
Massive thanks to James and the rest of the worship team. Thank you so much for leading us in that time of worship. As we move forward, um, we want to go deeper in a time of prayer. I would like to share from 1 Corinthians 13, 13, which says, And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. I love how uh, King James Version puts it. The greatest of these is charity. Let's hold that thought as we pray to our Heavenly Father. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship you, adore you, magnify you, and just be extravagant in our worship and love for you. Thank you. Uh, that as we come together as a church community in Greater Manchester, we're also praying for the wider world. We're praying for our leaders in this nation and our leaders in church. We commit the forthcoming meeting moving forward into your hands and we pray for your divine wisdom and the gift of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit on the leaders and us as a church community as we navigate how we can meet again. Father, we just commit that meeting into your hands and we commit the rest of this meeting into your hands, O oh Lord. We come to, to bear in mind anything that's impeding us from a full relationship with you, any sins that we've committed or omitted. We just want to spend some time just reflecting and confessing our sins. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, please forgive us of our sins and help us learn to forgive one another, truly to truly forgive and forget any sins that have been committed against us. We want to pray specifically for families who may be in strife, difficult, it's been a difficult time. There's been a lot of job losses, people have been furloughed, and people have lost loved ones. And Lord, we just want to bear that in mind, Father, as we come to you today in prayer. We just pray for healing. And we just pray for comfort. And we pray that you help us to, to recover and navigate from, from our loss. Help us to get back on our, on our two feet and to stand again. Help us to trust in you where we have failed and to know that you are our strength, you are our rock, you are our fortress. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for sending your Son. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross, for the forgiveness and remission of all our sins. We just thank you that you are the perfect, absolute, ultimate expression of love, and you're what love should be, what we should be. And we just pray that as we move forward, as we move closer to you, we become that expression of love in our world so that people can see and they can come to know you as their own personal Lord and Savior. We pray for any who are struggling this time, any who are sick, we pray for healing. Father, almighty Father, we pray that you have heard our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So as we move forward now um, into our time of offering, I just want to pass on to Wumi. Good morning, church. My name is Wumi Akanji and I'm part of the King's Church Central Community in Manchester. I'm here today to encourage us to give by way of tithe and offering. If you would like to give, you can do so by visiting makingjesusfamous.org forward slash give now. 
the beautiful thing about giving is that it's not only a way to show appreciation and thanksgiving to God, but it does that and it also allows us to support people within our communities and beyond. As such, we want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has continued to support over the past couple of months and give generously. Your generosity has allowed us to meet the needs of people within Manchester and all across the world. And we also want to encourage and remind you that God sees your generosity and your giving heart. In Proverbs 11 verse 25, we are reminded that a person who gives generously will prosper and that even as we replenish people, we will also be replenished. So please take encouragement in that fact as you give today. I will now hand over to Hope. Thank you. Thanks, Wumi. Good morning, King's Church. My name is Hope, if we haven't met before. I hope that you're all doing well this morning and it is so good to be with you. So, coming up this week, we have the first ever online Moving Forwards meeting. This is gonna be a fantastic opportunity to come together as King's Church family and listen to what the leadership and some of those with prophetic giftings amongst us have been sensing is the emphasis and direction for us as a church over this coming season. It's gonna be an interactive session as well, so if you would consider yourself part of King's Church, we would love to see you there. If you've not yet received a link in your emails or on a text message, then please do get in touch and we'll make sure that you're able to take part. So put it in your diaries this Wednesday, the 15th of July at 8pm. Last week, we had the first of our Let's Talk About It series. This is a series of discussions confronting the difficult topics of racial injustice and inequality in our society. Richard and Lacundo are hosting a series of conversations with members of our church family about their experiences and helping us to think about how we can respond to this as individuals and as a church. These discussion videos are a fantastic way to kickstart conversations which will continue in our Zoom groups and beyond. So, all of the episodes are going to be released in full on our website at makingjesusfamous.org forward slash let's talk about it. But just in case you can't wait that long, here's a clip from this week's episode. fact that we've got such a you know a lot of cultures in our church is it's amazing I, I'm just thinking about the work tapestry if you imagine the big tapestry in a in, in a museum that's been unwoven by different treads mm -hmm. just imagine that tread is a single tread it's just the color blue what would you get would you get the beauty of the tapestry itself the answer would probably, I doubt it. But I think it's the fact that there's so many colors of tread mixed together in order to emphasize some certain aspect within the object that's been portrayed. And that brings a lot of beauty into, into the tapestry itself. So I think the fact that we've got different nationality, you know, recognizing that, celebrating that, I reckon makes us even more attractive than yeah, it just makes us more vibrant, more attractive. Building on that uh, analogy of uh, this beautiful multi multicolored tapestry, um, there has to be a recognition that to, 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 to be able to achieve that level of beauty takes really hard work and a lot of work. You know, it doesn't come easy. That work of art that you will see and admire has taken somebody a lot of pain to pull all those colors together. And so, yeah, we, we, sh we should bear in mind if we want to be a church that is celebrated for its diversity, it's going to take a lot of pain to get there. You know, I'm sure those who put those tougher streets together will have very frustrating time to try and get this color in and that color in and that color in. And at times you're doubting yourself, do they really match? If you are somebody like me who doesn't know how to combine colors, then <laughs> you, you will constantly be checking with yourself, do they, do they really match? Are, are we doing well? And even that is good, you know, uh, having those kind of times to reflect, are we on the right path? Are we choosing the right colors? Are we recognizing everybody? Is, is part of uh, and parcel of where we want to get to and we should embrace all of those. Uh, really pushing that analogy a bit further then. Um, I guess that 
you know, because you, you mentioned it takes hard work. And I guess the easier thing to do, if you've got a whole pile of, I don't know, blue threads and a whole pile of red threads, let's just stick all the blue threads over here uh, on this part of the tapestry. And then we'll put all the red ones over here because we can do them all at once. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot more work to really interweave them. And so yeah. that picture of an interwoven tapestry, yeah. that's where the really hard work is, isn't it? Yeah. And if we're really honest, we do still sometimes end up in our beautiful church family with clumps of red thread over here and clumps oh, yeah. of blue thread over there. Oh, yeah. 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 I, mu I must say my longing is so that um, we would have that that intermingled beautiful tra tapestry where we are where we don't see that um, any kind of divide, but everyone feels welcome and valued and that, that the cultures do come together um, and there is a longing to understand um, and listen. And I think, yeah, you know, sticking with that, that, that analogy of the tapestry, <laughs> you know, I think sometimes as well, there'll, there'll be mistakes, won't there? Sometimes people might miss each other, you know, in, when you're making that tapestry, I'm sure sometimes it might not go exactly as, it, as you planned and as you intended. And there's bound to at times be mistakes and we don't get things right. But that doesn't mean that we don't want to persevere and be and be willing to, like you're saying about that, that effort Rakaya put in, the, the effort that we, we need to make to, um, to listen to one another and value and respect and um, understand. Yeah. I also have a tapestry comment. I don't want to be left out. So, <laughs> so I was just thinking, just, just when you mentioned the Akin, like when you have a, like a, a woven tapestry, the front of it looks very nice and everything's in the right place. But if you turn it around, it's a mess because things just like cross over from one. So it's messy. The whole, I think, and, and I think right at the onset of this conversation is really good to recognize that what, where we're trying to go is messy. Good morning, beautiful people of King's Church, and a special welcome to anyone who is joining us today. My name is Tunji. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here at King's Church, and I'm black. Um, that sounds like stating the obvious. Um, I said that because today I'll be touching on something that has to do with accepting one another. Um, this is the third installment in our new preaching series, One Another, and today I'll be preaching on accepting and forgiving one another. Um, just before I jump right in, I would just like to say a quick word of prayer. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to listen to your word and thanks for the privilege to speak for you. I ask of you this morning that as I speak your word, that it will bring life, it will bring strength and encouragement to everyone who is listening right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right, so um, if you want to come with me to Ephesians and chapter 2, and I'll just read from verse 11 to 21. Ephesians chapter 2, 11 to 21. Therefore, remember that formerly you were, you are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who are called, who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh, the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access 
to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. What a wonderful passage of scripture. So the first thing I want to quickly point our attention to from this passage is the fact that God loves diversity. And I'm just going to take on a very short journey and then we'll come back to this passage. You see, God loves diversity in his very being. It is diverse. You know, it's triunity, what we call trinity. It's three distant persons in one God. Same, equal in essence, and harmonious in purpose. And so we see that God loves diversity. In his creation, from the very beginning, God established diversity. You know, in the account of Genesis and chapter 1, where God made the heavens and the earth, we see diversity right there. You know, he made the heavens and the earth. He made the seas with all kind of creatures, all kind of animals to live in them. He made the land with all kinds of creatures. You see, one refrain that you constantly see in the book of Genesis and chapter 1 is everything after its kind. And so God even made some animals and plants to live and to survive on both land and the sea. And then God made, you know, night and day. Just imagine having it all day or having it all night. Now God put a mix there and there was morning and there was evening. There was evening and there was morning. It created the seasons, you know, autumn, winter, summer. Imagine if it's just all winter. I know some of us won't like that. Definitely not. Now, God puts, you know, variety in his creation. And then he made humans. And when God was going to make humans, he didn't just make humans as male or man. He made man and woman and he created them with different kind of giftings and talents and uniqueness. And so from the very beginning, we see that God is a God of diversity. God loves diversity. You see, God's intention in creating his, in, in, in creating the world in such diverse way is for beauty and synergy. The intention of God is that the whole of creation will work together in such a beautiful harmony under his headship. But then the fall happened. The fall happened and man, you know, as it were, rebelled against God. And it became straight away about the survival of the fittest. Straight away we see in the book of Genesis and chapter 3, man blamed his wife Eve for the fall. And then the woman blamed the serpent for the fall. You know, and straight away we see Cain kill his brother Abel. And so the, it, the plan of God as it were and his intention in creating the world as divers became mad. But then God, because of his love for his creation and his love to see us, even though different, walk together and live together in harmony under himself and with one another. And that's one thing you quickly see in the fall. That not just that man was estranged from God, but the fall and the estrangement of man from God, as it were, became and resulted in the estrangement of man from man from man, from woman, and from the whole of creation. So God embarked on a rescue mission. You see, God in rescuing and reconciling all things to himself, decided to use a nation. He decided to reconcile the world to himself through a group of people. You know, he called the man Abraham and through him, you know, the nation of Israel came and the intention of the father was to reconcile the whole world to himself through this family. 
You know, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible says scriptures foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham, saying to him, all nations will be blessed through you. And so when God called this man Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, his intention was to reconcile the world to himself through the family of Abraham. Eventually, our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, was going to come through the tribe of Israel. And, you know, Paul, Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 of verse 16 picks up on this idea. He writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God to bring salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Unfortunately, the Jews misunderstood God's idea of salvation. They read Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 as the gospel is for the Jews only. So they held on to it. They over the years then developed this complex against all nations of the world. They became hostile. They despised other nations. They missed the point. God's point was to reconcile not just Jews, but the whole world. And so we have this massive divide be between the whole of creation as it were it was as though there was just two groups of people. There were just two races, Jews and then the rest of the world. And that brings us back to Ephesians and chapter 2 and that's what we just read. And so in the gospel, God reconciles not just the Jews, not just a group of people, but the whole world. To himself. And so Jesus came on the scene and tried to set things straight to bring the Jews back to a realization that the intention of the Father was not just for them, but for the whole of humanity. And so God brings his diversity into play again in salvation by calling us from all nations, from all tribes, from all backgrounds, from all group of people. He saved us. He called us as diverse as we are. I love what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. Paul writes, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. And so God, it goes on to say, God chose the weakness of the world to confine the strong and all of that. You see, God called us from different backgrounds. I'm African, you're white, you are Asian, but God in his mind, in his love for diversity, decides not to just save a group of people, but the whole of humanity. And then he calls us the body. It gifts us differently. Or oh, it gives some pastor. It gives some evangelist. It gives some prophet. It gives them the gift of encouragement. It puts us in the body. I love the expression, the analogy, the body. Because it suggests that it's made of many parts. So we are members of one another. The part does not make the body. Or should I say, one singular part is not the body. It takes different parts to be the body. And without a part, the body is not complete. And so the part of the body that is severed or from the rest of the body is also cut off from nourishment when it's outside of the body. So it's such a beautiful picture of how we all come together, even though diverse. The hand is different from the leg. The nose is different from the ears. But they all work together to be the body. And that is the plan. That is the mind of the Father. You see, in Christ Jesus, God decided to get rid of all divisions. You know, we read in that Ephesians in chapter 2. So the Jews as it were, had this superiority complex. They despised the Gentiles. The Gentiles had this, you know, contempt for the Jews as well. There was this, there was this barrier. There was this separation. There was this hostility, age long. But then Bible tells us that Jesus is our peace. He is the one who came and broke down the barrier such that it doesn't matter anymore who I am. It doesn't matter whether I'm a Jew or I'm a Gentile. It doesn't matter whether I'm bond 
or free, doesn't matter whether I'm rich or poor, in Christ Jesus, every barrier, every division is broken down. Look at what Paul says to us in Galatians. Galatians in chapter 3. Bible says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God. I believe this is verse um, 23. It says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized in Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. How beautiful is that? In Christ Jesus, the wall is broken down. You see, many times in the Bible, we, we read and see this expression, brothers. You know, the older versions, we call it brethren. And the more recent versions, we, we render it as brothers and sisters. Did you know that that word from the original is the word Adolphus, which means born from the same womb. Wow. You and I are born from the same womb because we are born again. The wall of separation is broken down. In Christ Jesus. Therefore, we must accept one another. Even though we are different. Even though we are diverse. In Christ Jesus, we are one. And because of that oneness that we share in Christ Jesus, it shouldn't matter whether I attend within shore or central or I'm part of Sweden's side. In Christ Jesus, we are one. We are brothers and sisters. We are one family. We are born from the same womb. You see, Romans chapter 15 and verse 7 tells us, says, accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Accept one another just as Christ has said to me. You see, it is true that because we are diverse and different, we will step on each other's toes. We will wind each other up. And we do that all the time. You see, the most spiritual of us is still a man. And so we are fallible. We make mistakes. We, we, we offend one another. And so God calls us, knowing that we are different into one family, and knowing that because of our differences, we will offend ourselves. But then he calls us to bear with one another. He calls us to forgive one another. You now the Bible tells us, you know, in Colossians 3 and verse 13, he says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. You see, I want to encourage us this morning, even as I've been speaking about the need to accept one another and to forgive one another. If there is anyone in the body of Christ, in the church family that you you think you've offended or that you think has offended you. You know, just like the challenge um, Josh gave us last week. I want to challenge us. Why don't you, in the course of this week, make a decision, take a step to work out reconciliation with this person. Make the effort to seek and to give forgiveness. We are not saying that you should pretend that you've not been offended. I'm not suggesting that you should ignore the offense or the hurt. But the biblical idea we have of forgiveness is that I accept that I've been offended. But I choose to let go of the hurt and every feeling to want to punish the offender. And so because we are the body, because we are one, let us walk together. Let us forgive one another. Let us bear with one another's differences. I'll just finish by reading this scripture to us. Ephesians and chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Paul writes, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. 
Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. There is one Lord and one faith and one baptism, one God and one Father of all, who is over all and through all and in you all. God bless you as you walk together, as we accept one another and forgive one another. I want to thank you for your attention. I will hand you over now to Judith um, for the rest of the meeting. Thank you, Tunji, for that. Um, that's a real provocation and encouragement um, to hear about how much we are accepted and forgiven by God really does provoke us to, to be like Christ, to, to have his heart, to, to forgive and to accept one another. So as we have been forgiven and accepted, we can be those that forgive and accept one another. And maybe that challenge is something that can provoke you to think about who you might have offended and perhaps some healing and restoration can come from that as you seek forgiveness. And, or maybe you will know restoration in your own hearts and lives as you forgive those that might have offended you. So, so thank you for that, Tunji. And, and we'll continue throughout the week to be thinking and to be praying for that in our own hearts and in our lives and in our relationships. Um, I also want to remind you to keep on praying for the one. I hope you have managed to, to do that, maybe set up reminders for yourselves around the house to pray for those people that, that God has laid on our hearts, that we will see God move in them, that God will prosper them, that God will heal them, that God will encourage them and be with them in this time of need. So let's continue to pray for the one that, that they will too come to know Jesus like we know Jesus. And also remember um, to register for Moving Forward on for the 15th. We really would love for you to be there as um, those of you who are part of King's Church so that we can talk some family business together. Okay, well, we love you and we just pray for God's blessing upon you. May you know God's encouragement throughout the rest of this week. Um, maybe get involved with Zoom Connect if you've not already. Um, and let's um, find as many opportunities to, to meet one another and to see one another as lockdown is starting to ease. All right, God bless you and lots of love. Bye-bye. <laughs>